Okay, so I'm going to continue what I was saying before. Um, I didn't mean for this to be part one and two, um, but I had to stop the last video. So the um, second, this is the second part to the door in the Lost City of Gold review. Um, I should say that it has spoilers in it, so this one... This part two is more um, where I'll talk about spoilers going to Dora than, say, um, the first part. Because I forgot to mention that, and um, now since I'm mentioning it now, if you haven't seen Dora in the Lost City of Gold, you don't need to watch this. Just watch the first part. Um, it's, <laughs> it's not really a review, but kind of an analysis of the whole movie, so... Um, just go along with that. Um, so anyway, with Dora, right after she goes to this dance, there's a scene in this movie, well, at the dance, where Dora um, is the only one in the movie who decides to um, get on the dance floor. And what's kind of funny about this scene, or at least the way I experienced this scene, was that um, this little girl that was sitting next to me, she's like watching this scene unfold, and this is like a, I guess it's a four or five year old girl, and she, <laughs> even this four year old child has more sense of this movie than um, the writers seem to, because I'm watching this scene, and it's just, it's, I think it's actually kind of funny, because it's supposed to show you how socially awkward Dora is, given the fact that she's lived in the jungle for about 16 years of her life. They're not too specific on how old she is, because they say it's about a 10-year time jump, from her in the beginning when she's like, I, I don't even know how old she is in the beginning. She's what, like maybe six years old? So it's 10 years after that. So I'm just going to say she's about 16. Um, cause uh, she could, oh uh, yeah. So she comes to this school and she's like really socially awkward. Um, but what happens is the, the girl, <laughs> the girl sitting next to me, when Dora's doing this really, really, um, horrible dance, and it's just the, the most cringy dance you'll ever see in your life, this girl sitting next to me is like, that is so cringy, and now, she, she's not, she's not making fun of the movie, she's just a regular audience member observing the movie, but I thought it was kind of funny that, I guess the target audience for this movie, whoever the target audience is, is also kind of judging this film. Um, I, um, so, I like, I liked where it was going with the, um, high school angle. It was kind of, I thought it was just a joke. Like, I thought the whole movie was gonna be this downright joke and parody of Dora. And that's what it was for the first, like, 10 or 20 minutes. And it's this pretty, pretty cute, pretty funny parody of what it'd be like if Dora was out of the jungle and came to the world here. Um, but what's weird about it is they have... Um, Dora meeting these kids, and the, they're like, there's this girl, she's like selling brownies, um, I think because I saw Transformers 2, Revenge of the Fallen too many times, whenever I see a school selling brownies, I start to think of other things, and sure enough, luckily, those brownies, um, weren't laced with any drugs or whatsoever, but... <laughs> There are drugs in this movie, and I will get to that later on 
when I get to that moment in the film when I questioned who was actually watching this movie, who was the target audience that they were planning for, because there's a scene later in this movie that rivals, I believe, many of the scenes from the Cat in the Hat film with Mike Myers from 2004. But, um, or 2003, um, so, there's this girl who's selling brownies, she's like this really cool girl, she's, well not real. she's not cool, she's like unpopular, because she's knowing it all, but like, she's getting straight A, she's like the top of the class, she's a really, really smart girl, um, and she just wants to be the best, um, you know, um, student she can be. But, like, nobody likes her. Diego says that nobody likes her. And then, um... <laughs> what's funny about this movie... Is, um... They... they I, I don't know. It's, it's the plot of the film. It's not a side plot, but... The plot of the film is basically Dora... Um, and these kids, these high school kids, um, one being the girl that's selling the brownies, the other one being Diego, and then there's that kid that's really awkward and hold his, can hold his breath for a really long time. Um, and then Dora. Um, these kids end up in this situation in the movie where they get locked in this, um, box, um, by a couple of, by a, um, I think three, three, I guess you could call them treasure hunters. I think that's the term they use, um, treasure hunters. And they are, they are just, um, I mean, it, you, you couldn't be more one dimensional than like a, tr a triangle on a piece of paper. That's how one dimensional they are. They are, they're, they're given no character development whatsoever. And that's basically the whole point. I mean, they're just these, ooh, evil guys, like twirly mustache that are trying to find some treasure, which is the lost city of gold. Um, oh boy, I already forgot what it was called. It was, what was it? Um, oh boy, it's like, uh, Patapaya? I, I, this is this is the um point of this movie. I, I completely forgot <laughs> the name of the place they were going to. But it's like an Incan civilization or something, which has um a lot of gold. And these guys they end up going to this place. Um and they they kidnap these kids. The leader of the, um, what you would call mercenaries, <laughs> mercenaries, treasure hunters, whoever it is, is, um, Tamar Morrison, a.k.a. Aquaman's dad, a.k.a. Django Fett. I like to pretend this movie is a Django Fett prequel, and this is how Django Fett learned to hunt people. That's all. Because they give this guy absolutely no background. And he's like, Hey, Dora, how are you? And then Dora's like, You know my name? And then he's like, Yes, Dora. I know your parents, too. And I was like, Well, that was fast. I mean, we got no background to this guy aside from that. And apparently her parents are... Um, apparently her parents are captured by these people, according to these, according, maybe to one of the guys later on that pops up. And, um, sure enough, Dora and the kids, they get in this box, they get knocked out, they get thrown into this, they, they, they get on a plane somehow, they end up, they end up in the jungle, I, I don't know where it is, I don't, I don't care where it is, it's just a jungle. Um, and then they run into this character. His name is Alejandro. And my goodness, 
this movie <laughs> went from like if it was at a very very low like um well no it was it was about it's about a it wasn't terrible it wasn't great <clears throat> but it was kind of like here and um it was like right around okay and um this Alejandro character shows up and um this guy is just a buffoon literally everything he does is a mistake and he he's just when when we're introduced to him he's just like um I guess he's supposed to represent why children are now smarter than adults are. And adults are stupid. Because that's all we know about this guy. He's just a stupid guy. And, like, he falls off, like, the back of a truck. He doesn't know where he is. He gets some um, trapped in quicksand. He ends up, um... Ugh. I, I don't even want to talk about this guy. Because it was such a... At least until, like, the end of the movie. He, he was a very, very... Very hard character to watch, I'll say. But, um, after, after, um, they meet him, he saved, this is just a random a guy that says he knows the parents. He saves Dora and the kids from these evil people. And guess what? Swiper appears. Apparently, Swiper's working with these, um, mercenaries. What I thought was kind of funny and this was something I didn't know until the end when I saw the credits, is that Benicio Del Toro plays Swiper. I don't know what it is with Isabella Monaire and actors, but she goes from what, starring in a movie with Mark Wahlberg in Transformers The Last Night to starring in a movie with Walt, Mark Wahlberg in Instant Family. And then she's in Sicario Day of the Soldado with Benicio Del Toro, and now, in a way, she's in Dora with Benicio Del Toro. I don't know who she's going to star in the next one. I get, I'm awaiting the next Michael Pena film where Isabella Monaire's in it. But um, that is that is kind of what happened. Um, my reaction to Benicio Del Toro as Swiper was like, are you kidding me? That was... I mean, he's not, he's barely given a role in this movie. I mean, Swiper, Swiper has some interesting parts, but, I mean, Swiper's just there as a, like, an homage to the original cartoon. He's not there as, like, a, say, um, you know, um, pivotal character. But, um, I thought that, I thought that, um, the movie was, like, I mean, it, some of the jokes are just so bad. Like, okay, let me get to, like, probably the worst scene and yet the best scene of the movie. And it's when, um, um, the girl, I don't even remember her name, um, the, the I'll call her the brownie girl, um, she is, um, she is acting kind of strange, and she's, like, hyperventilating. She's like, I can't handle the jungle, I can't handle the jungle. And Dora's like, ooh, I, I'm so equipped to be in the jungle, and everything like that. And, um, she's with Dora. But what's weird about it is that, um... <laughs> She's trying, she's, she, she, let me just say, she has to go to the bath, and <clears throat> this character is so nonsensical, it's like, everything that this character has to do, she has to be told how to do it, she is like, I mean, if I was trapped in a jungle, and I would probably come up with the reasoning to, um, 
go in the bushes. <laughs> um, but this girl's like, what do I do? And um, Dora's like, oh, do you have to poo? And the girl's like, um, um, I think, I think she's like kind of apprehensive about it, but then she's like, oh, of course I have to poo. I've had to poo for the last 10 minutes. So I had to poo for this thing. And Dora, Dora's like, well, let's sing a song about it. And she takes this girl to the, um, to the end of the jungle. And I'm like, what's going to happen here? <laughs> and sure enough, Dora gets a shovel. She just has like this retractable shovel. And I have, at this point, I have no idea what this means. Like, is she going to like scoop the poop out of, I don't know what's going to happen. And then what happens is she's like, okay, I'm going to dig you a hole. She digs her a hole. Let's sing a song about it. And they sing a poop song. Um, and then the girl, um, she goes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, these arrows start shooting at Dora and these kids and the, um, the, the, um, dumb idiot adult guy, and they're shooting at him, and, um, um, Dora is like, uh-oh, what do we do now? We gotta run away, and, okay, this is the crazy, then they start to, they start to shoot some of the arrows at him, to the point where they get trapped in this log. And the arrows, like, knock them off, um, knock the log off the place it is. And, um, I think one of the funnier jokes is when they get out of the log, the adult guy is like, Well, I think I, uh, is everyone okay? Because I think I sustained a serious brain injury. But, um, that's, like, one of the only jokes that I think I, I laughed at, not at the movie, because I, th I thought it was funny. And Dora is, um, trying to make sense of what's going on. But, um, apparently there's a bunch of these, um, tribal people that are trying to, like, protect the gold and stuff. And, uh, I don't even feel like getting into that. But, um, okay, I'll, I'll just skip to the part, um, to the scene that really, I think, is what, um is what this movie is about. And it's a scene that um, is really kind of, I would say, um, just the moment you see it, it kind of makes you question what is going on in your reality right now? Because it's a scene where they, I think it's Dora, Diego, and that um, idiot guy, the in a plant field. And in this plant field, get this, is actually um, like, I guess the plants are drugs. They have some type of chemical drug thing to them. So when you breathe into them or something, you... It's like... It's like you're taking acid? I, I don't even know what, what it was supposed to think, but the moment they start breathing, like Dora looks over and she sees Diego, and Diego, his head is now the cartoon Diego head from the show. And I was like, what? And then you start to see Dora changes into her cartoon, and the guy, the idiot guy, he changes into his cartoon. And um, I'm watching this, and I'm like, oh, wow. This is kind of cool. I mean, 
okay, so they use the cartoon angle of the show in a very kind of creative way. But then the guy, the adult, around a bunch of kids, he's like, oh no, I don't know what's happening to me. Oh no, I'm freaking out, I don't know what's happening. I feel like I can do anything. And this guy strips naked in front of these kids, underage kids, and you see a cartoon, a cartoon version of this man, and the camera shows this man take his clothes off, and you see a, a cartoon version of his entire back. His entire behind is shown on screen in cartoon form. Um, I think this movie's rated PG, but I, I was like, "What? What is this?" And then like the the like Dora and Diego are running around, and it's about a five minute sequence of them in cartoon form. It feels so out of place to this movie. And then um. Um, they, like, wake up. Apparently, they, they didn't, um, I guess they, like, they were dreaming or something. So it's like, oh, it was a dream. Then you see the guy, and he looks up, and he's, like, naked. He has, like, a blanket over him, and he's naked. So, maybe it wasn't a dream. Um, oh, boy. So th th there was like a drug, there was like a drug sequence, a um, acid dream, LSD dream, whatever drug it was that they had um, in this movie. Um, so parents be warned. There's a scene where Dora takes some drugs that she doesn't know are drugs, and she hallucinates. Um, I don't know if really parents should be too wary of this movie. I think it's a it's a pretty um it's a I mean I saw Scooby Doo one when I was like four years old. That movie haunted me for life. <laughs> that film, especially when Rowan Atkinson's like I don't know what you call them. Purple, brown monsters come out like that, that. That just scared the crap out of me as well. That movie was scary, and that movie scarred me for like a good two years. I had a dream when I was in kindergarten. You know, in my dream, I was in kindergarten, like in my art class, and one of the Scooby Doo monsters pops in and terrorizes my school. Um, so there's no none of those monsters are in. Um. Um, Dora, but, yeah, and I, I don't think Dora has too much, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a family film, I'll just say it's a family film, um, but my goodness, my goodness, <laughs> um, I don't even know if I should, um, Going, oh boy, I, I said there were spoilers. I said there were spoilers beforehand. Maybe there isn't really. I'm just kind of giving a, um overview. You know what? I'm not going to spoil um, specifically, but I'll just say there's a character that turns out to be not what you believe to be. What, what you believe that character to be. The character become characters, um much more developed than that, and there's a bit of a, I guess you could call it, twist in Dora in the Lost City of Gold, so I won't really spoil that, you gotta see it for yourself, but, um, that twist is, um, um, I mean, it, it's there, <laughs> and you can't really, um, you can't really debate it. <laughs> But, um, anyway, there's a one scene when they're in a quicksand area, and, um, I, okay, 
I'll just start off right now. This movie is, um, without a doubt, inspired by Indiana Jones. I mean, there are so many Indiana Jones type parts to this movie. Um, I think most of the movie is pretty much Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, but with Dora the Explorer and a bunch of nonsensical characters. Um, but um, they also have like a quicksand sequence. And the quicksand sequence is um, pretty hilarious because, I mean, it's not like a traditional quicksand sequence. Like, I just saw Lawrence of Arabia a couple of, um, a week or so ago, and there's this one great scene where the guy um, falls in quicksand, and when he's in quicksand, it's such a, it's such a, um, it's a great scene um, because there's nothing, like, the, it's a desert. There's nothing around him that he can grab that could help him. But in Dora, when they're falling in the quicksand, there's like so many um, plants, rocks, things that I feel they could grab to get out of the quicksand, and they just don't. And they stand there for five minutes waiting for Dora to tell them what to do. So um, the characters are kind of silly, but it's an interesting way for them to get out of quicksand in this movie. And then one guy, he ends up not getting out of quicksand, but somehow he survives by them pulling him out of the light by his legs. Um, then um, they um, find their parent. They find Dora's parents. And it's quite like, it's another scene of Michael Pena just probably getting as much money as he was earned in this movie and saying some of the worst dialogue you could possibly ever say. I'm surprised that um, they even got him um, because that role is just so horrendous. But um, there's um, the, there's a twist that happens, and um, what is there? This is the point of the movie. It's about I don't know how what. I guess you call it the third act. I'll call it the third act. I found the third act. See, the first act was kind of fun. I'll, I'll say the first act was kind of fun. The second act was so bad, it was fun. So I would compare, like, the second act to The Room. Whereas this one, the third act of the movie, is where it kind of... It bored me, and it felt kind of like a, um, just a bad, just a, just a bad movie, and it's, and it's not really, um, um, it's, it's, uh, I can't really say it was so bad it was fun, because it kind of wasn't, I was kind of getting lost, I was like, oh, when's it gonna end, but, um, yes, so, they get to the, they get to try and resolve whatever conflict they have at the end of the movie, and uh, I mean, there's not really much for me to say about it that was kind of bad about it at the end of it. But um, there's a particular scene where Michael Pena and Eva Longoria, as um, Dora's mom, are crying uncontrollably, and that's I believe how the film ends, and it is just awful. Um, but the it's 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 they they have a couple of things they have to solve. In a way, I feel like Dora solved more things and went on more um, adventures in a way than Lara Croft did in the last Lara Croft movie, Tomb Raider movie. But um, I don't know. I don't I don't remember it too well to um really judge. But it felt like she. Dora was going and doing so many things where I was like, oh boy. And some of the, some of the, um, predicaments Dora got in were, were interesting because she was getting in these predicaments and, um, I mean, the, the kids in this movie that are with Dora would be dead without Dora because Dora saved their lives. But I think a better movie would be 
to see how these kids would fare in, say, like, the Hunger Games, because I can guarantee these kids wouldn't last a second. Um, to see Dora in the Hunger Games, that would be funny. But, um, um, yeah, so, when, um, then there's this scene at the end, it's like an end credit scene, I don't know why they do this in movies now, because it's technically not an end credit scene, because it essentially is the credits, um, it's like a dance number, and it's kind of weird, because it's like, okay, this is Dora, now she's embracing her teenage self, and she's dancing in, I don't even know what party, what kind of party it was, but it's, it, it's like a completely different Dora, so there is, in a way, character development of Dora's character, but it, I don't know if it's really good character development, because it's Dora developing from, say, a positive, but a very, um, kind of, she doesn't, understand the world. Now she understands the world. Um so I guess she is positive, but it's it's a very strange ending I found for that movie because it's like the Dora I saw dancing at the end of this film isn't the Dora that I think I saw for the beginning of it felt like a felt like what you whenever you see videos of actors on set dancing between takes music. That's what this video felt. And um so they had this end credit sequence, and that was fun. Then there's a scene. At, there's an end credit scene at the end for um some Dora fans. Um, if you are a fan of the TV show, that you can stay to watch. But it's not really too pivotal. I mean, it's not even a scene. It's just characters on screen. Um, not like Hellboy, where they decided to add three new plot lines to that film through end credit sequences. But um, um, yeah. So. I would say that Dora in the Lost City of Gold is <clears throat> not a good movie, but it's a movie that is kind of fun, and I would, I, I would probably recommend people see this film just to see how bad it is, and then to enjoy how bad it is, because it's very rare you get to see a movie like this, and it is so bad that it's fun to watch. Um, the actors give dedicated performances, I'll say, and it is a kid's movie. I, I think the kids in my theater liked it. Uh, there may have been some clapping going around. I don't know. I, I just was watching this movie, and I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I felt like I was watching, like, a movie that was made up, like, say, in a parody film, where they're like, okay, coming soon to theaters near you, and they just made up a movie for fun. Because um, it, it, it doesn't feel like a real movie that people put together using a script. It, it just doesn't. But, um, um, in fact, I don't even know if they have any toys of Dora. Um, of this movie. I have to look into that, because that'd be interesting to see how they would approach marketing this movie, because I believe they only marketed this film through, say, the trailers, and, um, some, um, um, ads on YouTube, but the, I, I haven't seen anything, whether merchandise-wise, um, um, music-wise, speaking of music-wise, they have, in Dora, they have some very strange music choices. Um, and when I mean strange, I don't mean like, um, well, actually, I do, I do mean what you think it means, which I, it's just, I'm like, really? Like, they, they play, um, I think it's, um, Friday, I'm in Love by The Cure in there, and I'm like, there's a Cure song in here, and they use instrumental most of the time, and then they play some of the, um, the, um, lyrics. But, um, I'm watching this movie, and the song doesn't fit at all with what's going on. It's, it's fun to hear in the movie, but I'm like, what is this? And they play some other songs. Like, they play a song in the credits that I think is a song that came out, like, ten years ago. And they, they may have been thinking of Dora ten years ago, and they're like, okay, we're going to use this song when Dora comes out. And they never made it ten years ago. 
and now now they're making it so they they reuse the song but um um yeah so i would i say i i give dora a um out of 10 i would give it a let's see i would give dora a 5 out of 10 i would give dora a 5 out of 10 cuz i had i had fun with it in ways and i would give dora a c i would give it i think i would give it a um I think I would give it a C, cause it, it it's just so, like I don't know like it's so stupid that it's kind of fun, but it's not a good movie. But um, you know what? I'll give it a D because it's Dora. How about that? Um, um, so yeah, that that's my Dora review. Um. So, yeah, this is my first YouTube video. There's a, well, I mean, the first one was my, part one was my first YouTube video, but this is the end of my, I guess you could say, two-parter, just like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, um, and Hunger Games Mockingjay, but I'm not trying to get you to watch it, it's just that I did not, for, I, for, I had to shut off it. I had to shut off the first part. So, anyway, I would like to thank on this video because I mean it's late and probably no one is sticking around to watch the end of this thirty-minute-long video. But um, I would like to thank all the YouTubers that helped me get on this. Um, I would like to thank um, the very first YouTuber I watched, Jeremy Johns. Back in um twenty twelve I believe it was or twenty eleven, um, I would like to thank John Campia, um Robert Meyer Burnett, Tyro Magnus, um, Chris Stuckman, um Nostalgia Critic, which I kind of um paid a bit homage to the way he's been doing his things lately. Um, his little reviews lately by doing this review. Um, I don't know. I'm be, I mean, I, 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 I watch so many people, but, um, I'd like to thank them. I'll give a shout to Nicole cause she's the only person I know that has a YouTube channel right now. And, um, um, Oh yeah, and Edgar because he has a YouTube channel right now. So uh, those are the only two people I have that have YouTube channels. So I'll give you guys a shout out too. But um, um. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll probably put up some more videos that aren't as unorganized, cringy, and kind of um subpar like this one. But thank you, and. In 2045, if you're watching this and it has more than 10 views, um, thank you. So, this will end, and all I have to say is, um, swiper, no swiping.